So you've just finished working in your favorite image editing program, and your masterpiece is ready for the art gallery, your web design portfolio, or even 4chan. But when you go to save it, you're presented with this baffling array of file format options. TIFF, PNG, BMP, and come on, why does Photoshop think you look like you know what a JPEG is when all you want is a picture of a god dang hot dog? Well, to answer Hank Hill's question, JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. And despite the fancy sounding name, you don't need to be an expert to use it, as it's an extremely common format in the world of photo storage. JPEGs are popular for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest is that they save a lot of storage space compared to older formats like BMP, which used to be widely used due to its simplicity and compatibility across devices, but has since fallen out of favor. Now, to achieve these space savings, JPEGs use what's called lossy compression. So when you save an image as a JPEG, some of that image data actually gets discarded to reduce the file size. Now, the way that it does this is it compares every 8x8 block of pixels that make up the image to 64 standard patterns, then determines how much weight each of those 64 patterns contributes to that block. Afterwards, the higher frequency or more checkerboard-like patterns you see to the lower right have their respective weights lowered by an amount that depends on the JPEG quality setting, as your eyes aren't really all that good at seeing lots of brightness differences over a small area. This means that oftentimes, these higher frequency patterns end up contributing nothing to the compressed image, which is the main way JPEG compression can reduce photos down to just around 10% of their uncompressed file size, with very little loss in perceptible quality. But there's a catch. JPEG compression works best with photos because the detail in the photo tends to hide compression artifacts. JPEG struggles with sharp edges and curves you often find in non-photographic images, such as diagrams or design elements on web pages. For these, a much better format is the graphics interchange format, commonly known as a GIF or GIF. Well, however you pronounce it, GIFs use lossless compression making them ideal for simpler images like corporate logos, because you won't end up with any of those nasty artifacts that are easier to see in a clean, simple design. GIFs can also, very notably, even be animated by showing multiple images in rapid succession, but their huge drawback is that they're only limited to 256 colors, meaning they often appear grainy when used for more complex images. So then, if you want no loss in image quality without the huge file sizes, what do you do? Well, this is where you might turn to the increasingly popular PNG format, which stands for Portable Network Graphics. Now, as the name suggests, it was designed to be useful for sending images over the internet. Now, PNGs can reduce the file sizes of graphics-heavy images without introducing compression artifacts the way JPEG and GIF can. Though the lossless compression means your file sizes will be larger, so keep this trade-off in mind. But it's not all about image quality versus file size. PNG also supports transparency, meaning image editors and web browsers can understand that certain areas of the image are meant to be transparent, allowing more flexibility in how the image is used. Of course, there are times when image quality is of paramount importance, and you're not as concerned about file sizes, such as in professional photography settings, where TIFF is a popular format. Now, although TIFF can use compression, it also supports uncompressed images, as well as many different color spaces and other options, making it popular among photographers and printers. It's also increasingly common to run across images in the Scalable Vector Graphics, or SVG format, which can be resized as much as you like with no loss in quality, meaning file sizes are usually very small, and you can learn much more about vector graphics right up here. And there's actually one important format that isn't really a format at all, raw images, which are also sometimes referred to as digital negatives. Now, just like a negative from an old 35 millimeter film camera, a raw file isn't an actual picture, but it contains the information needed to create one. So it's a very lightly processed file that contains as much of the original information captured by the camera sensor itself as possible. Raw files typically require special codecs to open them on a desktop image editor. But raw images are favored by photographers because having all of that original data opens up so many more editing options, such as more granular control over brightness and colors than would otherwise be possible. Now, some raw formats, and they are not all the same, even allow things like white balance or overexposure to be corrected after the fact, 
Whoa. Then, after editing, raw images can just be saved as whatever format makes the most sense. So I hope this video has made it a bit clearer why there are so many different formats for something that seems as simple as displaying images. And if it has, let us know if you'd like to see future episodes that explain other kinds of file formats for things like audio and video. TunnelBear VPN lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you're in a different country. They have easy-to-use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and also a Chrome extension. Just choose a country in the app, turn TunnelBear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. When you turn TunnelBear on, two things happen. First, your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. And second, your public IP address gets switched, so you can show up as you're in a different country. TunnelBear lets you bypass all the annoying details that typically come with using a VPN for personal use. There's no need to mess around with port configurations, DNS, or any other router settings for that matter. TunnelBear handles all of that in the background. They also have a top-rated privacy policy, and they do not log user activity. And now you can try out TunnelBear VPN with 500 megabytes of free data with no credit card required. And if you choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. So thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you like it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment with your suggestions for future videos. And check out their other channels. They're always doing something wild and crazy over on Channel Super Fun. Whatever's playing above my face right now, I'm sure that looks just fantastically entertaining. So go check that out, and we'll see you guys next time.